Welcome. This orientation overview will give you information about Employment Services Diversionary Work Program, DWP, requirements and benefits. Do you have questions, need assistance, or need language assistance? Please call DWP Employment Services at 651-266-4816. We are happy to help to assist you. Overview. Your first step is to listen through this 15 minute overview, which contains all the information about the program. If you are approved to enroll in DWP, your employment counselor will help you through the program requirements shared in this overview. After this overview, there are three next steps. We will review these three next steps again at the end of this overview. They are step one, read, complete and return the initial employment plan and other requested verifications. Step two, you will be notified of the decision by your financial worker and then assigned to an employment counselor once eligible for DWP. Step three, after you are enrolled, finish and follow your employment plan with your employment counselor. Share additional details, employment changes or concerns with them. Employment Services, DWP, and MFIP. In Minnesota, there are two cash assistance programs. Both require you to search for or maintain employment while you receive financial assistance to support your family. DWP, Diversionary Work Program, is a four-month program. MFIP, Minnesota Family Investment Program, is a five-year lifetime limit. Your intake worker will inform you about which program you qualify for. The goal of DWP is to help you maintain or find employment as soon as possible to achieve self-sufficiency and divert you from needing to apply for MFIP. However, if you still need help after completing DWP, you can apply for the MFIP Cash Assistance Program. Employment Services Overview. While you are receiving DWP financial assistance, you will be required to develop, sign, and follow an individualized employment plan, which you will create with an employment counselor. If you are already working full-time, the employment plan will include retaining the employment unless discussed with your employment counselor. You have opportunities to disclose any circumstances that could affect the ability to get or keep a job. Family Stabilization Services, FSS. If you think you currently can't work or can only work less than 20 hours per week due to a health issue, physical and or mental, please inform us. We will issue you a medical opinion form, MOF, and inform your intake worker. The form must be completed by a prof medical professional and be returned to us ASAP. If a health professional completes the MLF stating you can't work or you can't work more than 20 hours per week, your case will likely be transferred into the FSS program to give you more time, support, and resources for your employment goals. Inform your employment counselor if you have any issues that make it difficult for you to find or keep a job. Medical health, physical and or mental, domestic violence, and or a learning disability are some example of things you should discuss with your employment counselor. Your employment counselor will be inviting you to a meeting once you are enrolled in DWP and talk with you at your first meeting about yourself, your family, and help you reach your goals. Then you will develop an employment plan together. Your employment counselor will ask you to keep track of your job search activities so they can review your efforts and assist you if needed. Your employment counselor will tell you about job fairs and job leads. Your job counselor will provide you resources for your individual and family needs. You will be eligible for support services such as transportation costs, provided you are following through with your employment plan activities. Child Care Assistance Program, CCAP. 
If interested in applying for CCAP, please go to www.applymn.dhs.mn.gov. Complete the information and inform your employment counselor that you have done so at your first meeting. The Think Small website is a great resource for finding various types of child care options. Visit Think Small organization at www.thinksmall.org. Your employment counselor will need to send a child care transmittal stating that you are participating in required activities and need child care before your child or children begin attending. Questions regarding CCAP can be directed to Ramsey County CCAP at 651-266-4444. It may be possible for a friend or relative to provide child care. However, this can be a lengthy process. Call 651-266-4444 and ask to speak to a CCAP to begin this process immediately. What happens if I start a job? If you start a job after your DWP financial help has been approved, that income will not change your DWP cash grant amount. This is one of the best things about DWP. However, if you are participating in the food program and or receiving child care assistance, these benefits and or co-payments may change based on your income. You may have multiple county workers to help you throughout DWP. The first one is an employment counselor to help you with your goals and to offer you support. Second, a financial worker who will handle the financial, food, and medical aspects. And third, a child care worker if receiving child care assistance. Employment verification form, EVF. Always report your employment if you are already employed or when you begin employment and EVF will need to be completed by your employer. Please sign and date the document yourself and turn it into your financial worker or employment counselor as soon as possible. If your employer states that they use the work number instead, inform your financial worker so they can log onto the website and verify your new employment. 35 hours each week. Starting immediately, you'll be required to spend 35 hours per week on job search, working, or other work-related activities approved by your employment counselor. English classes or classes to obtain a high school diploma or GED can usually be included as a portion of the 35 hours per week. Due to state of Minnesota rules, higher education programs that won't be completed before your time on DWP ends usually can't be counted towards your hours per week. Other certifications, license, and or training programs that will be completed before your four months of DWP is done may be eligible to count as work-related activities. Job search activity logs. These are a state and federal requirement during participation in this program, unless you are working 30 hours or more per week. If you are working less hours per week, the difference between work and required hours should be tracked on the job search logs. Use these to track your job search activities. Examples of activities are listed on the back of the log. Your employment counselor will explain and go over how to complete the logs with you. Complete one log each week and submit them to your employment counselor. Your employment counselor will give you more details. Important, if you do not attend your first appointment, you will be sent a disqualification notice. If you do not regularly attend other appointments after that, including completing your activities in your employment plan, you could also be sent this notice. This states that your DWP financial assistance will end. You will need to contact your employment counselor and immediately change, update, and or complete activities listed in your employment plan in order to reinstate and receive all four months of DWP financial help. In order to maintain DWP financial help, please communicate with your employment counselor 
on a regular basis. Other resources, Career Lab. Career Labs are located at various locations throughout Ramsey County. Services included job search assistance, career planning, resume and application assistance, interview practice, job fairs, and much more. Go to www.ramseycounty.us backslash career labs for more information. Initial employment plan. The white form initial employment plan is your first plan about looking for work. You need to sign this plan before your case can be reviewed for final approval. The plan repeats many of the things in this overview, such as beginning job search efforts immediately and attending all scheduled meetings. Please write your name, case number, and sign and date in the bottom box of the initial employment plan. For two parent households, each caregiver needs to do this. After signatures are completed, please return this form along with any other verifications stated in your packet. Failure to complete, sign, and return this form will result in automatic denial. Questions about the employment plan, please call 651-266-4816. Your initial employment plan looks like this. Notice of privacy practices. At your employment counselor meeting, they will go over the notice of privacy practices with you. This form provides information regarding privacy practices, including why we ask for certain types of information, who we can and cannot share the information with, what choices you have about giving information. Responsibilities, rights, and consent. At your employment counselor meeting, they will go over the responsibilities, rights, and consent. This form repeats information included in this overview. What you are required to do as a participant of the program and what we will help and what we will do to help you. The disqualification process if you don't do what you agree to do. What steps you take if you have a disagreement or complaint. Next steps. Step one, read, complete, and return the initial employment plan and other requested verifications. Please note, parents and caregivers in a two-parent family should both print their name, sign, and date the form. A two-parent family is both in the household applying for benefits. Your file will be reviewed for final approval. Please ensure that all necessary information has been returned to your current financial worker. Step two, you will be notified of the decision by your financial worker and then assigned to an employment counselor once eligible for DWP. If approved, your employment counselor will send you a letter and contact you about your first meeting. At that meeting, you will discuss and create an individual employment plan for your success. Step three, after you are enrolled in the program, Finish and follow your employment plan with your employment counselor. Share additional details, employment changes, or concerns with them. We are here to support you. <laughs>